Good morning, Raymond. Good morning, Enimwa. Good, Good morning. I hope you are doing well this morning. I am doing oh, very yeah. well this morning. I want to believe so. Your blue tie says it all. <laughs> it's a victorious morning for all of us. And have you seen Amon? No. I, 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 I spent the entire night looking for him. You spent it? <laughs> Anyway, how did you spend oh. your night? Did you spend it looking for number one? Sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> really, Raymond. Oh, no, we can work it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Looking yes. for him, way. Yeah, I mean, did trying which corners is likely to be somewhere in Dubai, somewhere in Enugu, Nigeria, so somewhere in South Africa. Wait, I, so I, you went to Dubai and Nigeria? Oh, you know? no, I used my wonderful <laughs> network. <laughs> Anyway, so um, uh, we are going to get those details of all the stories that cover this number one issue this morning in the newspapers. But let's start with the front page. Now, today is reported this morning, nothing will stop Yana's funeral. And this is coming from the chairman of the eminent chiefs. That is a 2 4 say, to the second. And NAPCO recruits cry over stipends. But Minister Assets issue has been resolved. Those are stories on the front page of today. On the front page of the Free Press revealed calls on Namwan to be MP was a ploy. Casa Preocupadness government in one district, one factory cut sought for new factory in Kumasi. More violence could be imminent. That's um, from the Andanis. And Mahama cracks the whip. Delegates fall in line and Atu Ahoy cited as NDC's Maradona. Now, the new crusading guide is reporting this morning, NDC government provides safe haven for Ponzi scam. And its porous financial ineffective system always breeds frosters. And that's what's being reported on the front page. Other stories on the front page of that paper is government is securing some $60 million uh, for phase two of Investor of Health and Allied Sciences project. And that particular project is on the front page together with um, some commendations President for firing analysis judge, a gentleman, Yasofi, he's the one commending the president for firing Anas judges. You know Anas judges, right? Yes. Um, Justice uh, Habib Logo. Yes. Justice U.P. Derry. Yes. And Justice A.C. Utapo Derry. Utapo Derry. George Aisiado. George Aisiado. Yeah, uh-huh. that is the list. Those were the contenders in outside courts. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> the Daily Statesman is reporting Mahama cost banking sector mess. That's according to the boss of the Dankwa Institute. Men's gold boss arrested in Dubai. Government initiates reforms to transform education sector and Ghana Fed company CEO slams unpatriotic contractors. And we can say good morning to our very good friend, the uh, Dankwa Institute boss now. Yeah. Gabi Asari Otre Dako. No, yeah, he's a big man now. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, the initiator co- of the news <laughs> on the uh, arrest warrant. Yeah. It's and he's statesman online. Yeah. He's the one that dropped the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> so if the two are connected, then you see something is inside. Oh, Mr. Otre Dako. Anyway, now, government settles 720 million MDA debt to ECG as Morocco prepares to invest 586 million US dollars takeover beginning. In February 1. And we told you during business today that there's a, a new MD appointed for the new ECG, not ECG regulatory, but ECG functional. That's yeah. what the front page of the Gold Street business. But to escape the listing on the Ghana Stock Exchange, it's also be reported by the same institution. And again, Ghana said to leverage on CNN's ranking as ideal tourism destination for 2019. So if the ranking did not come now. <laughs> what would we have? It's okay. The, the ranking has come. <laughs> the ranking, and you know, 2019 is the year of the return. Ah, exactly 400 years since the slave trade yes. year began. So it will be a great year for all diasporans to come down. We will come home. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You, you are already yeah, here. Already. Uh, apart from the Nugu and it depends, the Dubai it depends that you, where you belong. <laughs> <laughs> On the front page of the Herald, PMMC Opari Hammond suddenly dies. Akufado and daughters caught in another cash for seat scandal. Narcotics Control Board dying under Ambrose Derry. That's according to the staff. And um, yeah, that's it for the Herald. Now, the Daily Graphic is reporting this morning. Um, GES suspends PTA dues in SHSs and New Year's school opens today. And this year's New Year's school is predominantly about Parliament, its oversight role. The Reverend Professor will do the opening today. That's the Speaker of Parliament. And one man that I respect so much, Professor Achuai, will be the one delivering the keynote address. He, wrote, he has a book here about angels, demons, and also the public policy making systems. A fine book out wow, there. Wow. Anyway. Last year, you did very well at the New Year School, moderating a few of the, of, of the panels. <laughs> uh, no, you want to say that I did something. But oh, yes, yes, yes. You didn't <laughs> come and do your own queen table. The, 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 back, the back page is reported this morning. P. 
PRC directs utility companies to justify demand for tariff increase. And the last one is government resolving NAPCO stipend challenge. So the back page of the Daily Graphic. Yes, and on the back page of the Ghanaian Times, NIA begins registration exercise in Ga East tomorrow on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. That story about the Tema Port Marketing Public Affairs Manager murdered by unknown assailants for die in auto crash on Tema a flower road also there's a health alert all health facilities ordered to increase surveillance for meningitis mm. infections and yana and danny's funeral underway in yendi as peace returns to that now the find that is reporting this morning another thermal hits wager botiano and that's on the front page with the last one another shocker this is this time around is your own not you know i'm saying my shocker Amufa, who was killed by police, is not an armed robber. This is according to CID's own report. Mm. And this is the latest. Remember, the Mansoon Kwanta people were not armed robbers. Recently, the one that was killed at Teshi 2, not armed robber. But this is the third not armed robber situation that the police perceived provided evidence to suggest that the guy was armed robber. What I don't understand is that the arms that he was carrying, he was allegedly carrying yes. long knives. Yeah. And he was uh, going away on a motorbike. And they felt the best way to stop him was to shoot him to death. Yes. I mean, anyway. Mm. Anyway. On the front page of the Ghanaian Observer, JJ Barks over Amidu's silence says, I wonder what is holding him up. Cocobot punches Mahama and MPP exposes NDC over drumroll defections. Okay, and also on the front page of the Business and Financial Times, let's copy China's vocational education system, new port system ready in two years. And that story was also on, on the front page of the BNFT last week. Zoom line, eyes investments in waste energy plant. Um, and that's it. That's it for the Business and Financial Times. Right. Thanks anymore. And Raymond, um, so graphic.com.gh has yes. reported the story that Namwan, Nana Piamenta, has been under arrest in Dubai since December 4, 2018. It doesn't look like that story got to print. I mean, of course, others are reporting it too, but the Daily Graphic, there's no part of the Daily Graphic where the story is also supposed to be. So I don't know wh why. But okay, probably... which, which papers have the story now? Okay, so we know that the Daily Guide has a story. It's very scanty. The other stories that are also being presented, if you've seen, uh, what do you call it? There's one about tri Tribune. Yes, the Daily Statesman too has a story. Then there's other provider that has a story. So three in all. But the Daily Guide zone is what you can probably uh, take some heat from because what they are basically saying is that the man who disappeared from this country and is on the wanted list was arrested in... in, in of course, the word they use is being held up in Dubai. This is in relation to some gold trading business that he's alleged to have been involved in. In fact, they say the news about his Dubai rendezvous comes on the heels of conflicting reports on social media that he had been arrested in the Nugu state of Nigeria and was on the verge of being repatriated in to the country. But we told you that the CID had denied this claim of being arrested in the Nugu. But what the reports out there are stipulating is that the man was arrested in connection with the gold dealing de what they call it, deal that's gone back some time ago and was supposed to have been on the track of the Dubai authorities in this case. So they are not arresting him because we need him. That's what the stories are suggesting. Yeah. They are arresting because there's something that has gone wrong in Dubai related to gold trading, which he is alleged to have been involved or know the people who might have been behind that particular engagement in this particular case. So that is what the report generally is supposed to be about. Good. Of course, the daily guy moves on to talk about Ghanaian authorities still looking for him after the Yoko and the BNI said that they are collaborating on this matter to make sure that he is dealt with at the right time. And we know why he's been looked out for. We know because government intends to pull a charge of defrauding by false pretense, mm -hmm. contrary to Section 131 of that particular Act 29 and 1960 on him, so that when he's charged, he will be put before court. In fact, related to that, we've been told by the CID boss that the gentleman is also supposed to, what they call it, face some money laundering charges. And of course, they are related to the United Arab Emirates in this case. So we'll bring you more details as to when they evolve. Yes, yes, yes. But a bit more here. Um, first of all, the Daily Statesman story states Interpol sources. The graphic.com.gh story uh, states graphic online sources, graphic online sources close to the matter. And apparently, they, they add a bit more color to it. They said that he landed in the Persian Gulf business hub that is in dubai late last year in the hopes of retrieving some 39 million dollars old men's gold by a dubai-based company 
Horizon Royal Diamonds DMCC for the supply of gold. There's a bit of background to that. Yes. Yes. And there's a statement from Horizon as well. Yes. Horizon a, Royal Diamond, right? Yes. There's a statement. They are actually making some claims too. Specifically, what they are saying is that um, this one is one Fred Bimpon, who's the board chairman of Men's Gold. Fred Bimpon. Yes. Yes. Fred Bimpon, or rather. And uh, it says a declaration to the effect that Men's Gold Ghana Company Limited, with its chief executive, Nana Pia Mensa, is not in any way connected to Horizon Royal Diamonds business dealings with Just Gold Company Limited that has led to a loss of Horizon Royal Diamonds funds and that of Men's Gold uh, Company Limited is not liable, cannot be held liable for any claim whatsoever. And the second part of the statement says Horizon Royal Diamond extends an invitation to Men's Gold Ghana Company Limited's delegation to pay a business visit to Dubai to discuss and conclude pending business relationship and it proceeds to say that Horizon is hereby hereby undertakes and guarantees Men's Goods delegation best hospitality and security whilst in Dubai. And this particular letter is said to be the basis of that relationship that um, people are questioning is the source of his arrest <laughs> yes, in Dubai. Yes, yes, yes. What we will do is that we'll um, look at, okay, so... If, it, if someone is arrested in Dubai on charges like Namwan has, is allegedly been arrested, um, can he be repatriated to Ghana? Can he be brought back? We'll be answering those questions on yes. the show today. State's relationship. With our, yeah. Yes, the, it depends on the state's relationship. There are a number of details there, but um, for the sake of time, we'll answer those questions later on on the Very show. Well. Uh, anyway, this is another story that really made rounds. A, a terrible story of a woman who came home from a party and was, and was killed. Um, yeah, so the marketing and public affairs manager of the Tema Port, Mrs. Josephine Asante. Well, apparently what happened is that somebody had been tracking her when she left a senior staff party held at Committee 6 in Tema. Um, so he followed her home and then stabbed her in her bedroom, locked it up, removed the keys and threw it on the compound. So what happened was that on Sunday morning, her son had been waiting for her to come and wake him up and do their usual morning routine before they go to church. But um, she wasn't coming out, so he went to knock on the door. Um, she didn't respond. And then accidentally, he found the keys on the compound of the house and opened the door to find his mother um, lying in a pool of blood. He raised an alarm. The neighbors came around and the police um, was called. One thing that stood out is that there was no robbery. Um, so even even though she had her laptop, phones, jewelry, and other things, nothing seemed to have been taken. The Tema Regional Police Commander, DCOP Edward Johnson, has been speaking. He says, yes, it has. It happened. Um, the body has been taken to the police, the hospital, the police hospital morgue for preservation and for an autopsy, sorry, autopsy. And investigations into the incident have started, but there's no suspect yet. Right. Um, our heart goes out to the family, mm. and it's a terrible mm. thing for a 12-year-old um, to see, uh, it, it, it reminds me of a terrible one thing for anybody to see. Yeah. Rosebon, yeah. and my problem is that some of these cases become cold cases. They don't get resolved anytime soon, and we are living in some parts in fear. Roko Fimpon, for example, you remember the Rosemont case, also in Sakumono. Yeah. These are all people who are said to be linked to the banking sector or some other yeah. corporate unit yeah. in one way or the other. So it's becoming problematic. It is becoming problematic. But mm-hmm. Raymond, uh, let's talk about earthquakes and uh, an earth tremor, I should yeah. say, in yeah. the same. Yes, exactly five weeks ago, I'm sure um, after they were hit by a triple tremor, the Wager Botiano suburbs have recorded yet another tremor. This was yesterday, we understand. The severe tremor, which struck at exactly 5.01 p.m., lasted a little over two seconds, sending shockwaves um, down the spiral, not only of people, but also shaking buildings along its path. And uh, the difficulty here is that we know that in December, December 9, we all were complaining about how the place was and how, in fact, that was not only the area that was hit by the December 9 event. And then Nadbo came out with a warning that we should prepare for it. We are in the fourth lines and anytime it could happen. We asked for what we should do specifically, that they came out with some regulations of where to move and all of that. But the place we are talking about is also very problematic. That wager place is also where the wager rich is virtually being depleted in forms and are mm. subjected to extreme uh, conditions that mm. we fear even without the earthquake, the place may collapse. Mm. So the an earthquake may worsen the situation there. And people will forget this. Now, NATMO last year issued where the earthquake risk zones of southern Ghana are. For the avoidance of doubt, the worst case scenarios are where the epicenter is supposed to be. The place we are talking about, the Wager Botiano area, is an epicenter. So is Kokobite. So is Nyanyano. And if you extend it, even parts of Accra are in highly risk areas. To be clear, if you want to move it along that particular path, 
Fetter, Elmina, and Azim are equally very high risk areas. And the risk in the southern part of the country is extremely high in most of the places here. What worries me is the frequency of these tremors that are happening because mm -hmm. they, they, they weren't this closely spaced earlier, but now we are seeing them a lot more frequently. A lot must be done to protect the people there. Uh, anyway, let's talk about rape now and yes, these um, culprits who are taunting the victim. Okay, so three years ago, um, six men were arrested by the police at Ehu in the Kitu North district of the Volta region. What happened was that a 16-year-old girl had gone to a funeral and she was walking back home. Um, one guy said he was going to help escort her because it was late and um, she, she may not be safe. What happened was that he, he, as they were going, he, they passed through a school and unknown to her, there were five other men that were waiting and they gang raped her, took turns, they videoed it um, and, and threatened that if she said anything about it, they would take her to, you know, one of those shrines. Um, that, that, anyway, take her to one of those shrines. So then what happened after that was that she actually went to the police station. She reported the crime. Um, the six men were arrested. They admitted to raping her in their caution statement. They also had a video in um, a video of the act, which is in the possession of the police at the moment. Well, for the past three years, they were charged with rape. And the docket was forwarded to the Attorney General. But this was all three years ago. So an official of the Attorney General's department has been speaking. He spoke to the Ghanaian Times on condition of anonymity. He said that they have finished studying the docket and are preparing the Bill of Indictments for the prosecution of the men. Um, he also says that rape is an indictable offence. We, that's the state attorney's department, will prosecute them. But that's what he's saying now. And it's taken three years. Um, and nothing has been done. And what's happening now is that as the girl is going about her business, she was 16 then, so she's 19 now. But as she's going about her business in the community, these men are there in the community. They're constantly taunting her, telling her she's never going to get any justice. She sees them all the time. And her mom said she's beginning to develop psychological problems from having to live and deal with the men who um, raped her and who are walking about free. So there's an, an appeal um, to the Attorney General's Department to to really just get on with it and do what they have to do. Please, really Attorney quickly. General's Department, please. Let's let's get to work as quickly as we can uh, because this this is not, 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 not. Raymond, uh, GES suspends PTA dues. Good news for parents? Yeah. Well, it, it might sound so, but you've heard some parents also say that, please, we want to contribute in ways that we have done in times before. Now, the crux of the GES claim is that we redefined the PTA dues. We took the most important elements, the most important cost out of it and actually paid for it, mm -hmm. which is teacher motivation and all of that yeah. in this fee schedule. We only allowed you space to charge 5CD. 5, 5.00. 5CD. 5 just 5CD. Five five yes. But the difficulty here is that the schools, according to GS, are still charging some levies that are illegal, that are not properly approved and all of that. So now, even the 5 cities we've cleared it. That's what the GS is saying. Don't take a password from any grouping. Now, the GS also says something that's redefining of the role of the PTA. You know, the PTA is like Parent Teacher Association. Mm -hmm. The GS is saying that, like any other association, you can't compel any school to charge fees on your behalf. Yeah. So, what it is saying now is that if you want to support any grouping in a school or whatever you want to do, use your own internal systems to charge your own fees. So, for example, the PTA might call its members and say, hey, you're all supposed to pay something. Don't ask the school to issue a statement on your behalf to the students and make and it look like students very if the good. students don't pay the PTA dues. And make it look what like what is happening now. And make it look like this is part of the what they call fee structure. My only difficulty is that if this is not properly uh, aligned, PTAs are very important roles in the school's engagement and running. If it's not properly aligned, we will have difficulties with what they will be doing in the nearest future. Right, thanks, Ray. Uh, let's go online. The online news review is brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest and Goyle Good Energy. And it's a new year. It's still good energy with Goyle, your reliable energy partner. Enhancing your engine performance and prolonging the life expectancy of your vehicle should be a top priority. Uh, so continue to get the best quality and value for money from Goyle Super XP and Diesel XP and the trusted range of lubricants from our or uh, 360 service stations across the country. To all our valued customers, we say thank you. We value our partnership with you. Because of you, we are still number one and still CIMG Petroleum Company of the Year. Let's continue the partnership to build our economy. 
Goyle, good energy, Goyle, proudly Ghanaian. Goyle, you're not right yet, dear. Pay and apply for your Ghanaian passports the easy way with your Zenith Bank card. Simply log on to mfa.gov.gh, select passports, follow the prompts and pay with your Zenith Visa or MasterCard. Payments reflect real time. Now that's what we call service. Pay your passport application fee the easy way with your Zenith Bank card today. Zenith Bank in your best interest. MajorOnline.com says, where is Nam1? Conflicting reports inundate media. So MajorOnline.com has put together the um, all the reports that are putting that are putting out that uh, Nam1 has been found. Uh, the one up in the Daily Graphic saying that they've been arrested in Dubai. I mean graphic graphic.com. Some claim that all of this is a hoax. Uh, so much more. Get that clarification from MajorOnline.com. Of course, we are discussing it today on the show, including this purported list, Raymond, which has been put out of. Uh, customers of yeah. supposed customers of men's gold. Chama Rowling said, "There's no way you can put my name on that. I don't have money for that kind of investment." But no, he says he doesn't people. need that investment. No, he said there's money for that kind of investment. <laughs> <laughs> he said he doesn't have any stash <laughs> fast anyway. <laughs> Uh, Gabi Asarochi Daku has also been reacting to yeah. that. To that, he says his name is on the list too. Yes. Okay, let me list so, the people. Sam so. he says no. Alote Jacob says no. Uh, what's the name of the other guy? Uh, Sylvester Mensah says no. If I estimate, we're calling plenty of them to find out who really is on the list. But it looks like nobody seems to have been. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we'll, we'll be going through those names on the during the show, of course, and bringing you those responses that we've been able to get from them. Napco to fix challenges with, with over 9,000 outstanding stipends. Joybusinessnews.com says, Lands Ministry revokes license of Heritage Imperial Mining Company. The BBC.com says, Jarrah Congo election. SADC proposes unity government. That's it for the news and online review. We're going to make way for the BBC News uh, at 7 coming up after this. Stay with us. This was Kwame's Life before Interplus in Green Irrigation.